Because you've done this before, right, Jeff, where you've taken your the volume that you would normally do in a three to four day per week set uh, set schedule, and you've spread it out over five to six days. But like you mentioned, the challenge with that is that you, the time, the the commitment for that, right, to have to be out. Of course, you have a home gym, but still, and also the potential systemic fatigue that overlaps, right? Like say you did a hard session the day before, even if it was just three exercises, how's your nervous, how's just, how's your body feeling from a, a overall fatigue, not necessarily mm -hmm. local the next day, right? So that's also a potential consideration, right? What I gravitate a lot towards is other sports, mm -hmm. because I think as bodybuilders, we're most of the time we're getting all our information from other bodybuilders or just the community in general. But if you look at other sports, most sports have a good handle on fatigue management. And this is something I've been trying to, you know, say in my blogs and all that. It's like, you know, we look at like professional baseball starting, starting pitcher you know they're not going to pitch every single game 100 pitches and usually the manager they keep track of the number of pitches they're throwing because every time they get out there in a game they want to make sure that that pitcher has a lot of velocity and has a lot of control and they know if like okay if this pitcher goes over a certain pitch count and if i put them out there too much they're gonna they're gonna lose that quality so as body lawyers, like if you take that same principle like if you're training hard like every single session, if you're cramming them together, like chances are fatigue's going to start creeping up. And personally, like when I'm have more rest in there, like every time I get in the gym, I have in a sense that velocity and that control, just like a starting major league baseball pitcher. And I think a lot of it's like fear-based or insecurity, like, oh, we're not going to progress at the same rate or we're going to atrophy or something like that. It's like no training at all is really is what kind of cause that. Right. So to me, it's like every time I set foot in the gym, I want to make sure that like I'm ready to go like a lot of energy i'm motivated there's no resentment no aches and pains or well, as minimal aches as pains as possible so i can maximize every time i'm in the weight room and also i think it's cool to mention this because again when you were experimenting or we'll say when it was when it fit the context of your life in that moment where you took the three days and you kind of spread out or disperse the volume over five or six that was appropriate maybe in that time but it's not mm -hmm. like people get attached to thinking oh this is going to be sustainable forever that's not, that doesn't even exist. Like everything is constantly evolving, even with exercise selection. Like now I see, okay, you've kind of taken this out. Uh, you've taken that out. There's like no dumbbell presses. There's no, any of that, that used to feel good for you. That was great for you in that maybe in the past, but now it's like, well, this feels good. These pushups that maybe in the past, maybe never did feel good. So it's kind of this interesting, um, yeah. yeah, this juggle of trial and error, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's just it. A lot of people start here and then, you know, they're beginners, right? So it's like, I got to listen to all these people because I have no idea what I should be doing. Then you start listening to all these people, you start doing these things. And if you're paying attention to how you're responding, then you kind of filter out like, okay, what this person's saying just doesn't work for me or what have you. Then as you progress over time and you get more to the advanced side, and in my opinion, advanced bodybuilding isn't like what's on paper, like, oh, the perfect mm -hmm. program. It's more like, how well you've been able to adjust yourself based on your environment in order to continue making progress. That's advanced bodybuilding. But like if you're, if someone's listening to this and they're just starting out, it's like, yes, you kind of have to kind of like find some guidelines to kind of gravitate more towards, but eventually you, know, you take some notes on yourself. You know, how well do you perform? How well do you respond? How do these exercises make you feel? Are you, are you feeling, you know, any aches and pains from these things? Um, make sure your diet and all that's on point. Of course, get your sleep, get your hydration and try to keep stress minimized but eventually like you know most people that i've talked to that have you know that where i've coached that have started out you know five years later you talk to them and it's like they kind of have a good handle on principles and that's what i kind of like base everything off as is more so pr principles and ranges versus absolutes you can kind of transition into this if you find yourself burning out and then maybe there's it's time to readjust how you're doing things because and I don't know if you've found this with some athletes where, okay, again, they're just doing too much where it's not sustainable and there's no long term, there's no longevity there. I think if you're getting to the point where you're like really just fatigued, whether it's physical, mental and emotional, that approach obviously is not enjoyable. And I kind of see it as anytime the approach is causing more stress in your life as opposed to like this thing, what we're doing is supposed to be enhancing our life. Then yeah, you got to take a step back and reevaluate that and change the approach to where there's no resentment, there's no fatigue, that type of thing. And you're just excited about it again. So whether that's downsizing your training, whether that's, you know, taking a week off or, you know, it could be like, 
could be the flip side too. Maybe you're not training enough. Maybe, you know, you're doing this three day a week split because Alberto's yes. doing it and Jeff's doing it. And you're just finding like, shit, man, the four days I'm not in the gym, I'm miserable. Right. Maybe you need four or five days in the gym. Maybe you need six because there's athletes where I've taken them from a three or four day split and gave them five or six. I just made sure to be strategic and spread that volume across so they're not wiping themselves out with every training session. And it brings more, more happiness because now they're excited because they're going to the gym more frequently. So you kind of just have to take each individual and kind of, you know, figure out, you know, the pros and cons and try to figure out the best approach for them to, in a sense, get the most out of their bodybuilding, not just from a progress standpoint, but from an enjoyment standpoint, you know, to do this for 36 years or to be a Marshall Johnson, you have to love what you do. And that might look different depending on the environment that you're under. Like, I'm not mm. like saying like, it's giving per people permission to do whatever they want because like, Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to train seven days a week. I'm going to train mm. seven days a week because I'm having fun with it. No, like you still have to have like that middle area, right? People tend to take certain things that people might see on the internet and they run with it way over here. Misinterpret. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, Alberto's doing three days a week now. So I'm going to run with that. And then, oh yes. no, but, but this guy over here is doing six days. So I better do that. So, you know, you can, you just want to make sure that you're kind of staying even keeled and you're staying in that middle ground and you're not letting yourself get too extreme one way or another. Do smaller muscle groups like side laterals, biceps and triceps need more volume to grow than bigger muscles? I don't know. Maybe it depends on the person and how what their re response is at. I would just say we were talking about earlier, maybe it's a good idea to start on the conservative side of things and maybe just enough sets to where you're, you're getting that skill.